we sold, we created 28,000 kilowatts, so that's 20 solar recs. And we're, depending on what the market is, any one, any one time, we will get that money. And that helps actually make this thing work. So we, we thought we'd get about $10,000 the first year for those. And that will, that's pretty much where a lot of our profit will come. Yeah, actually, that's that's a good good point. Um, I was saying that you know there's a restriction; you can't have more than this. This this seemed like an arbitrary number. Um, also, they under the current law, you can't advertise. So you know we, we're surrounded. This whole world is surrounded by advertising. You just um, you know you, you're getting hit bombarded constantly by it. We were told that we couldn't advertise in any way. When we go on the internet. We never say investor. We used to talk about subscriber or member. Um, we don't put any any literature out. Uh, it's pretty much hands or word of mouth. Um, most of our investors we, were just people that I knew or some of the other members knew. And we were doing this for almost two years. So there were a lot of people in our community that already kind of knew what was going on. So when it got to the point where we actually had a host site and we could move forward, we went to those people and said, you know, now if you're interested in investing, you know, we, we'd like to have you, you know, come in. Um, so that, that's kind of the other whammy that they hit you with. So you have a, a problem with a number of investors, but you also have a problem with how you actually reach out to those folks. And I think that's one of the, one of the hard things, but it's something you have to, we have to live with in the state of Maryland. We also decided we have enough people in the state of Maryland, we don't really need to go beyond our, limit, our boundaries. So because we stayed in the state, then we didn't have to deal with the federal laws. Um, so we, uh, and that actually helps a lot. Um, so you don't, it reduces your paperwork, it also reduces your costs and everything, so we decided we just would stay in the state. Um, there's one other thing I want to talk about. Um, oh, um, I think Joy mentioned in the literature about uh, getting an exemption. Um, that's what we're hoping to happen and maybe in our next project. The last project, we didn't need the exemption because we studied within that 35. But we thought the next project might be much larger and we would need to have more investors come in if we still kept these, this number down to like the $2,000 limit where we could bring in small folks. So, and that's what we really want to do. So we went to our security commissioner. Um, one of our state senators uh, knew, knew her. We had a me ended up having a meeting with her and she said, uh, after we sent her literature and talked to her, she says, I understand what you're trying to do. I think, uh, I feel confident that you're not out there um, and, and you're going to take someone's money. If you can do this in the next project in a similar way, and you show me what you're doing, I understand that the prospectus is, is honest. Uh, you've gone through, uh, there's a, a security law regulation. We had to actually have each of our members uh, fill out about a 10-page form which talked about their net worth, that they weren't being... Uh, they knew exactly what they were getting into, those sorts of questions. Um, we had to submit that, and so that has to be looked at, and, and we sort of prove that we're actually really uh, legit and we're not taking people's money. Um, anyway, when she saw what we'd done that first time, she said, I, I think this is, you're doing a good thing, and I'm willing to actually, I don't want to change the security laws because it's there for a reason, really to protect people, but um, I will give you an exemption. So if you come in next time, um, and we said, what about like 100 to 125 people? And she said, I think that's probably reasonable. So next time we have, we have a larger project, we're going to do that. And I'm actually hoping to um, do it with the second project, which we have, don't have, um, we don't have a host site for it yet. But if we do get the host site, then I hope to take advantage of that and actually kind of create a test case so we can try it. If it works, then other uh, groups in the state of Maryland will be able to do the same thing. Okay. Yes. Um, back on your on your offering there too. Is that uh, like a small corporation um, offering that's for the exemption that you're applying for that would then allow you to be able to offer to non-accredited investors? I think. I it's think a, sco a score. Is that an, an acronym that sounds familiar? Um, small corporation offering. I don't. I don't know. Actually, we're a limited liability corporation. Um, I, I don't really know. I don't know the answer to that question. Okay, just yeah. Yeah. Uh, the second question too is um, you said one of the one of your challenges is finding host sites. And yes. I'm just curious about what 
um, incentives that you've talked about, that you've sculpted, that you've created in order to make it attractive for host sites? Yeah. Um, host sites, I think, um, actually don't get probably get a lot of benefits. Um, they, I think they have to want to do it. And it seems like we've had a better chance with churches, um, possibly schools. Uh, we're working now with a friend's school, and we th they really are interested in, the, in, in doing the project. Um, we've talked to some other groups, uh, a, um, a large warehouse site. Um, we talked to the physics building, a, a national physics building, which is in College Park, which is in kind of a little in, uh, industrial area. That I thought would be perfect. I thought that would be these, this group of science with, scientists would say, well, we really should be doing this. We're a national organization. It ended up being the bottom line. They are not going to change. They have a roof that was about 18 years old and it's um, up for a repair or replacement in about three or four years. They weren't going to change that schedule. So talking to them about sort of like a stewardship um, didn't go anywhere. <laughs> uh, I, you don't have a lot to offer them. You can, you're offering them a slightly lower utility rate and not a lot. Uh, maybe a few thousand dollars for these small projects, maybe a little bit more for a larger project. So you have to um, tell folks that essentially you're not getting a lot here, but we have a smaller utility, a, you know, a lower utility rate. Um, other than that, I don't know if you have a lot to offer them, other than saying that this is the right thing to do. And most business people, that's not as important probably as the bottom line. Uh -huh. I had a question on the slide that you have for local green jobs. Our community, we're faced with both utility scale solar and then distributed generation, and we're trying to work with Joy's group to do some distributed generation to build awareness in the community and just, you know, know the terms, know the vernacular. But what would you qualify as a created job? Because we're trying to do that messaging in our community. Like, we're trying to create sustainable green jobs versus, like, boom bust construction jobs from a utility scale installation yeah. and it's really hard to message that so just in your experience you said it was a 22 kilowatt system what what were the jobs that you would consider created because you said your your staff is volunteer right yeah this would be strictly the installers and for a 20 kilowatt system I mean we they were had that thing finished in about a week so I mean <laughs> Yeah. Kind of hard to message all these are sustainable green jobs on your week done in a week. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, if you expand this and you think about this as uh, going forward and going statewide or even locally, if you create a lot of these projects, you just, you're going to be creating jobs and they're yes. going to be local jobs. But um, our particular one probably put a few man, a few man hours or maybe, you know, I don't know. 50 or 100 man hours into a project. I don't know exactly know what it was. They had a staff of about five people that worked on it on and off for about a week. It's, I guess, more or less, um, it's something that is potentially there, but our particular project didn't probably generate a whole lot of uh, actual uh, work. Yes. I, I know Rachel wants to move along with our program, but yeah. Dave, I was wondering, did you say Maryland has a feed-in tariff? Uh, yes. Yes. And uh, did that help you with this, uh, to have that? I mean, could you have done this without a feed-in tariff? Uh, would your utility have cooperated? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, our utilities, I don't think, are really that interested. And um, we even had a hard time getting connected. We, we waited, like, almost a month and a half in the middle of summer when we were generating all the electricity, or potentially doing it, and we couldn't even get our PEPCO, PEPCO to hook us up. Um, I don't think they really are very supportive of it, uh, but the public utility or the public service commission um, does require them, so they are required to um, help us. Yeah. Yes. Why aren't they able to? Yeah, I mean they're uh, uh, they're a monopoly sort of in a way, and uh, I think they see anybody coming with distributed energy as probably uh, I think sort of a threat. Um, but you know, ultimately, I think if we just we have the, the political muscle or get our senators and delegates behind us, I think we can you know, carry the day. But it's probably going to be a long battle. I'm sure that happens out here in Colorado too. I, I heard you say you had net metering, but you have a feed-in tariff in Maryland as well. Well, um, the net metering is not. Like in most cases, this is a, a kind of unusual case. In most cases, we won't get 
we won't have any surplus. Uh, we expect, like in the school project, which we'd like to do, we think we'll only generate about 10 or 15 percent of their needed electricity. So um, there will be there will be no never a, a, an excess of energy there. I mean, there might be a period of time where they might generate a little bit more during the day, but um, overall, you know, we wouldn't be uh, a net generator. One final question, um, David. What advice would you give for um, an individual or a group in in organizing an effort like what you just what you what you're doing? What's, what's your words of wisdom to share? I think um, having a group that's large enough. Uh, there was enough. We've had a couple. Um, we've been talking to people in our in our community. Uh, I mean, beyond our little neighborhood. Um, there was a group over in Tacoma Park, which is another suburb of Washington. There's another group out in Greenbelt. Um, they both started about the same time, about a year ago. And the Greenbelt group, um, amazing group of people, and they had about 10 folks, and they were pretty active, and they got assignments, and uh, they all stuck with it. That project is going to happen before the end of the year. The Tacoma Park group, they had one guy who was really interested, and he was trying to organize this other group of people. And there's another group out in Virginia, the same thing, where it seems like if you don't have enough people, um, it's going to be a frustrating or maybe almost impossible task. Our group, we also had a lot of people really stuck with it. You didn't, you didn't have to tell people to do stuff. They just went ahead and did things. I think it's really important to have a large enough group you can, you can count on. I think without that, you know, I think it's, it would be difficult. And then you have to have a lot of patience. <laughs> but I think having a, a group that's big enough. People. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Yeah.